All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here today. To start us off, I present to you Ms. Terry Davis, who is going to give us an introduction. Oh, Terry, I think you're still on mute. Sorry. Yes. Good afternoon. I am Terry Broussard Davis, CEO of the YWCA Houston. Welcome to YWCA Houston's second annual Why Women Started Up Pitch Competition. First and foremost, I want to thank you for attending and supporting our female entrepreneurs. Thank you, Mercury Group Foundation, for your efforts to make the program for female entrepreneurs successful. The support you provided and the resources you helped us access has given more women the opportunity to set up their own businesses. You really went above and beyond to make this possible. And thank you, YWCA USA, for your support and trust in a growing program that supports women of color pursuing entrepreneurship. And a little bit about the program. The YWWE 360 program helps aspiring business owners, mom and pop businesses, former market vendors, online sellers, artists, and independent consultants to start, grow, or sustain a business. The eight-week program is designed to help women of color overcome barriers in entrepreneurship and provide them with the knowledge, tools, and confidence to be successful business owners. Training includes key small business skills such as how to write a business plan, legal requirements for businesses, financing options, marketing 101, customer service, and human resources practices. The program also provides mentoring and coaching for budding business owners. At this time, I would now like to introduce our judges panels. These three individuals volunteer their time to support our female entrepreneurs this afternoon. We have Katrina Chambers, multicultural banking leader for Truist Bank, Houston's Councilwoman, Dr. Carol Evans Shabans, and Preeta Mattel, regional head of the Mercury Foundation. Thank you judges for your time and support. We have five brilliant women competing to win part of $30,000. First place is 15,000, second place is 10,000, and third place is 5,000 to launch and grow their business. All right, are you all ready to get started? I can't wait to hear these amazing pitches. Good luck to our participants. Ashley. Muted. Thank you, Ms. Terry. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. I am Ashley Hegelholtz. I am a community enrichment coordinator at the YWCA of Houston. It is wonderful to be with you all here today. And I am so excited to hear these great pitches that we have in store for you. So we are going to go ahead and get started. So all of our finalists have been selected from the Why She Can Do Business program. Each one will have three minutes to deliver their pitch and then five minutes to answer questions from the judges. So first up is Roxanne Deems of Serene Counseling and Wellness. Roxanne, you will have three minutes to deliver your pitch and you'll see the counter on the screen and then five minutes to answer your questions from the judges. Whenever you're ready. Hello, I'm Roxanne Dean, licensed professional counselor supervisor, 500 hours certified yoga instructor, and founder of Serene Counseling and Wellness, where we help little people make big emotional moves by incorporating play, yogic movement, and mindfulness activities into our therapy sessions, allowing us to get to the root of their problem and provide solutions to presenting symptoms. Mental illness and the demand for therapeutic services is at an all-time high, especially among children. The CDC reports a 24% increase in mental health crises in ages 5 to 11 and a 31% increase for ages 12 to 17. As kids transition back to in-person learning, there was a notable increase in social emotional challenges that showed up as social anxiety, lack of emotional control, academic struggles, and poor peer relations. 
Much of our competition, other practices in our area and tech companies like Talkspace and BetterHelp primarily offer virtual services that consist of a more traditional talk therapy. Agencies that are offering in-person sessions have limited in-person spots, very long waits for initial appointments, and generally only awful offer sessions Monday through Friday, eight to five, causing children to have to miss school. In my 10 years of counseling, talk therapy has been less effective with children and adolescents as they often lack the ability to put their thoughts and feelings into words. So at Serene Counseling, we see 85% of our clients in person between seven to seven Monday through Thursday and nine to two on Saturday. And we have been able to get a new client scheduled within three to five days of their inquiry. We are in network with several commercial insurance carriers, including some Medicaid programs, and we offer self-pay options. We have a reduced fee for those without insurance that are not able to afford our full fee. Our referrals primarily come from word of mouth, our practice website, Psychology Today directory, and the Department of Family and Protective Services. So what started as a team of me in 2020 has grown to a team of five therapists, two student interns, and a subleaser. We have gone from a two office to four office suite and are expanding to add an additional five offices, a group room, and a flex room in January. This expansion will allow us to add additional therapists and students and provide group services so we can extend our reach and touch the lives of more members of our community. Year to date, we have served 428 clients, ranging in age from two to 72, with a current revenue around $230,000. Our goal for 2023 is to more than double our service offerings and build a partnership with the local schools to provide greater support to them and the families in our community. Our clients come to us in emotional distress and they discharge with tools that help them express and process through their emotions in an effective manner that allows them to better navigate the stressors that are life. Our expansion project will require the purchase of new furniture, toys, and accessories, and a projector and screen for conducting group therapy activities. Mental health isn't going anywhere, and neither are we. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Roxanne. We will now open it up to five minutes of questions from the judge, judges, excuse me. Judges, if you want to turn your cameras on and unmute, you can begin questions. So first of all, thank you, Roxanne. I think that you moved smoothly through what you wanted us to know about your business. And my question to you is, do you have any more um, content you can share around the way your, your clients are paying you? I noticed you're in network for some, you also have reduced pay. Um, and um, could you just speak a bit more about that? Sure. We utilize insurance. So we collect insurance at the beginning of the session. Well, before they get started with their sessions, we submit claims through our, email, our health record system. And from there, we collect co-pays if needed. For those that don't have insurance and still want to utilize our services, we do offer a fee worksheet. So we do their fee based on their level of income. And just a, a one follow-up to that. And do you have a mix of what percentage of your current clients, because you've been in business a while and that's great, are paying you through insurance or through the private pay means? I would say 80% of our clients utilize their insurance. Great, thank you, thank you so much. Hi, Roxanne, thanks. That was really great. Really exciting to hear about the work you're doing. And yes, mental health is not going anywhere. So I, I really appreciate the way you ended that. Um, two questions for you. One, and I hope I didn't miss here. Did you say that your clients age from range from two to 72, like such a broad age range? So I guess yes. the question is, as, as you're expanding, clearly you're growing, which is great. Um, how you think about continuing to meet the needs of such a broad audience. Mm -hmm. And then I guess second, um, as you continue to grow, what do you, you know, what's kind of top of mind is your biggest challenge um, going forward? 
Okay, so um, I guess I'll start with the last part is the biggest challenge. Uh, the biggest challenge really is finding people that believe in the dream that we're building here and working with us to grow and not necessarily see us as a stopping point. So with me being a supervisor for people that are getting their license, we've been able to bring in different students and people at the associate level that are not fully licensed. And part of their learning is to go across the lifespan. So while our primary focus is on kids, to get that overall approach and to meet the entire need of the family from early on into adulthood and after, then we do have training for them as well to meet those needs. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I um, got in a little late, so I really didn't want to ask you a question. Had some technical difficulties, but I, I just just to give you a word of encouragement, I believe that your presentation uh, was very good. I also have a psychology background myself, and so certainly I understand the challenges as well as um, an educational background. I'm currently council member now, but you know, education was my, uh, my, my, uh, I guess my job when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm grown, <laughs> <laughs> I've moved to a whole place. But thank you for uh, a wonderful presentation. Thank you. You know, could I get one final question in? And I don't want to be, um, grilling you, but one of the things that I want to consider is a discussion of how you compare to your competitors, mm -hmm. because your approach has a, a nuance, and I think you said yoga, correct? Correct. So um, have you done any studies to see how your approach matches or differentiates, or do you have like a value statement for why your, your approach is different and better? So what our approach does is it creates a more comfortable environment. So we're not the traditional, I mean, I do have a couch as you can see, but <laughs> instead of just sitting on the couch, we add movement because once we add movement to what we do, it helps to loosen up everything else. So you're more comfortable and you're able to better open up and connect and get things out that you may not have gotten out just sitting on the couch. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Roxanne. Um, our next finalist is Alexis Evans of the Wellness John. John, excuse me, the Wellness John. Alexis Evans of the Wellness John. Alexis, you will have three minutes to pitch and then five minutes to answer judges' questions. Have you ever wanted to get a massage but didn't have the time to go to the spa? Through my customer discovery process, I have discovered that most people lack time. And according to the American Massage Therapy Association, most people didn't know you can get a massage at home until 2020. Good afternoon. My name is Alexis Evans. I'm a U.S. Navy veteran, certified nurse's aide who also holds licenses as an esthetician and massage therapist. I've been in the wellness industry for 10 years, and my gift is touch therapy. Imagine a mobile massage business that cares for your health and overall well-being. That's where the Wellness Strong comes in. We offer convenient massages that help people relax, but also help people rehabilitate for injuries, find help from chronic pain and illnesses. We all deserve to get what we need without having to disrupt our schedule or, or routine. The Wellness Strong's mission is to serve people by offering convenient ways of healing themselves by having massages on demand. So what does John mean? It's a Philly area term for any person, place, or thing. I'm the Wellness John, get it? So let's move on to why people will want to get a massage at home where they're most comfortable. We give you a chance to get more rest by staying home, so cutting out the need for the spa, and it eliminates the need for traffic, so the need for travel, so no Houston traffic. We offer a range of massages, including relaxation, deep tissue, and prenatal. The Wellness John has been on a complete transformation since the last time I was here. We now also chair massages at private events, health fairs, and networking events. We're now, like I said, we're now mobile. And with this um, 
change. We have saved 10K in rent alone that has allowed us to put money elsewhere, such as marketing. With the pivot, profits have gone up 2.2%. This year, I have been featured in multiple publications, including Voyage Houston. I've appeared on wellness panels at um, conferences, been able to travel to three cities to offer my services, and I'm the first ambassador for a BIPOC mental health nonprofit. The massage market in the U.S. is 18 billion. In Texas alone, there are 7 million people willing to pay for a service like the Wellness Jones. Within Houston, 500K are considered possible clients. 2022, we will end with 50K in profits. 2023, projecting 150K finish. And by adding just one employee in 2024, we will finish out with 340K. With your investment, I will upgrade my massage equipment so my clients receive the best treatments possible. I will also take an advanced certification course in order to stand out from other therapists. And I will break into a new market, corporate wellness programs. I understand my customers' needs, know how to get their attention, and anticipate their future desires. Those skills make me a grant candidate for this competition. I know the thought of changing your routine is mundane, but one of my favorite Norman Vincent Neal quotes fits nicely here. Learn to relax. Your body is precious as it houses your mind and spirit. Inner peace begins with a relaxed body. In the long run, this switch will save you a lot of time and stress. So schedule a consultation at the T-H-A Wellness John, J-A-W-N.GlossGenius.com and let us come to your safe space to provide you with unmatched massage experience. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Alexis. We will now open up to five minutes of judges' questions. So judges, go ahead and come off mute and camera if you have a question. All right, it's me, number one. <laughs> Thank you, Alexis. And you. I love your business. I can attest to the fact that this is a need. And I liked right off the bat how you said uh, this is how we can solve that problem. You don't need to travel, we'll come to you. So my question is along the lines of getting your clients. If you could talk a little bit about the sort of in the SWOT analysis modes, your strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats. So my strengths um, off top are, I'm very social. So I go to networking uh, networking events at least once to twice a week. I try to make that a priority of mine. And also, I, I'm also a part of the US space. It's a co-working space. So I have, I get people through there. And then like I said, I'm uh, an ambassador for a company called The Melanin Minds. So I also go through there. So mainly, this, oh, I'm very social. I like talking about my business. Um, I would say the weakness would be is people are still stuck in going to the spa. So there's trying to let them know, hey, you don't got to go nowhere. I come to you. You don't have to do anything. I come straight to you. You don't have to do nothing. You can be in your PJs. I come set up. I have the whole vibe of a spa and I bring it with me. And then when I leave, you don't got to go nowhere again. So it just beats all that there. So I, that's, that's what I would say. My strengths and weaknesses are. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You very much. Well, uh, good afternoon. Um, I guess I, I have a real understanding for the service that you uh, render because I actually, without telling my business, I actually have a massage therapist that comes to my home every week. So I do understand that it's a, it's a great uh, opportunity, but then I'm, I'm trying to figure out, I know that uh, briefly you talked about, you know, you're being social and whatever, mm -hmm. but where actually do you get your clientele? Is it mostly word of mouth? Or, uh, you know, what is your marketing strategy? Yes, um, great question. So right now, like I said, it's networking events um, and social media. I've gone through a lot of entrepreneurship programs. I'm a, a alumni of the SURE program through the U of H. So they've taught me how to really use your marketing tools um, on, on social media. Last year, I wasn't really fond of doing that. Um, so I've got a lot through there and then networking events. And then also, like I said, word of mouth is the big, is the biggest piece right now. Okay. Hi, Alexis. Thank you. Uh, thanks, You're welcome. Thanks for sharing that. I need to get more massages <laughs> based on this whole conversation. So uh, you've inspired me. Um, my question for you is how do you think about going forward 
what the growth of your org looks like. Like right now is, and I apologize if I misunderstood, right now you are Correct. the primary individual Correct. massages. So how do you think about that? And and when you when you give thought to that, like, you know, just kind of where, where does your head go? How do you envision growing what you're doing today as a service to people? Right, um, great question. So next year, um, I'm gonna stick with my mobile massages, stick with the events. I do an event um, every Saturday. And then, like I said, I wanna break into the corporate wellness so when I worked at Dun and Bradstreet, like I said, I'm from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, so the headquarters is there. So when I worked at Dun and Bradstreet, there was a massage therapist that came once a week. And I was like, huh, this is pretty cool. And now that I'm in the industry myself, I was like, um, I have to figure out a way to break into that. So quarter two, um, I plan on at least getting one contract with that. And then 2020, the end of 2023, beginning of 2024, I want to hire on an independent contractor and that's how I'll be able to double my income. And then going from years from there, figuring out how to get other independent contractors on the same board. So I'm not constantly working, you know, because that's that, you know, as a business owner, you, you eventually want to just run the business. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. I think we have time for one more very quick question. I had one more question. Okay. I'm curious when you think about your clientele, because you mentioned um, prenatal massages, I'm wondering, mm -hmm. do you see what, is there a clear split in what, not specific massages, like, are you seeing more prenatal? Because I could imagine, I have three children of my own, during that phase of my life, uh, leaving the house was not always ideal. So I could imagine. So I'm just curious if you're right. seeing anything. In um, so it's a range. Know? Great question, but like I said, it's a range of a clientele that I have. Um, some people are just getting to relax or they work from home. Um, I have some, had had some prenatal clients and I do have a couple of clients who are um, disabled and not able to get on the table. So I bring my chair to them. Um, so it's just, a, it's really a range of people who are basically don't want to leave the comfort of their home to get a massage, um, but they still have the need, you know, like I said, from relaxation to rehabilitation, to illnesses, to finding relief from chronic pain. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you, Alexis, and great job on your pitch. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. Our third contestant is Crystal Maxwell of Beautiful Influence. Crystal, you will have three minutes to deliver your pitch to the judges and then five minutes to answer any questions that the judges have for you. You can go ahead and get started. All right. Okay. My name is Crystal E. Maxwell and I identify as a serial entrepreneur. I am a licensed professional counselor intern as well as I have two other successful businesses, which is a catering company and a talent acquisition company. Before the age of 40, I've been able to achieve a master's on property, several investments in stocks and bonds and traveled internationally based off of my skills and networking. I am the executive producer, I mean producer, executive director of Beautiful Influence. I have partnered with other passionate community members and educators just like myself, successfully launched the Early Entrepreneur Program. The program is, active, is actively running with participants in Harris, Fort Bend, and Jefferson County. At the Early Entrepreneur Program, we give organizations and individuals the courses, content, and tools to help the youth become leaders, creators, and entrepreneurs. The problem is today's youth are facing unprecedented challenges, antiquated education systems, social media addiction, negative news, a very rapidly changing technology and job market, mental health challenges, family challenges, on and on and on. Collectively, we are failing to help them meet these challenges and we're failing to prepare the youth for life in the 21st century. So the solution is the right education can teach every youth the mindset and skills that they need to carve their own path and create any life that they want, regardless of who they are or where they are starting. That is why we exist. So the benefits of using 
the early entrepreneur program is we take out the guesswork of using a proven ready to go courses and tools. Our platform makes implementing engaging personalized courses easy with everything that our early entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurs need and it helps them learn the skills that they will actually uh, need to succeed. We provide them uh, with live coaching and custom support. So our team is here to make sure that our young entrepreneurs succeed via they have an initial onboarding call. We have weekly office hours, email support, and even custom support depending on what that young entrepreneur's specific needs are. And then we generate results with our unique approach to content and learning. So everything we teach has already been tested by our team, by myself, validated through other forms of research from youth all over the country. So instead of hoping they learn skills indirectly through our classes, the youth learn these critical skills directly, and then they can apply them to their own goals. And that is it. Thank you, Crystal. And we will now open it up to questions from the judges, and you'll have five minutes to answer those questions. Crystal, thank you. I, I was taking lots of notes as I listened to what you were explaining and it sounds amazing. And the counties that you chose um, definitely must be having some growth. What, uh, two questions for me are, where do you find the students that you're serving? Like, is it referrals? And also um, what customization is available for the content? Okay, so the first question was about where do we find the clients and yes, heavy on the referrals, but to be honest with you, because of my community involvement and the partners that are also involved in the program, we are talking retired uh, teachers, uh, community nonprofit um, organization uh, leaders, political leaders, um, they have been integral as far as getting the word out and there is such a need right now for the school districts in particular to find uh, different types of programming, um, thinking outside of the box, they have been, I mean, uh, that's why, uh, that's, you know, really, a, a, that's a large part of why I'm requesting the funding is because I would like to really solidify this curriculum um, because that is to me where I'm finding where I have more of the income potential versus putting the actual, um, the actual fiscal part of it on the student or their parents, so to speak, because many of the students that we do serve are in underserved um, uh, communities. So this way, we sell in the curriculum to the school districts, to organizations that are wanting to also do that. And um, that's the way that I would hope to be sustainable. You also asked one more question. You asked about the customization. And for instance, I'll give you a brief brief of, of some of our successful entrepreneurs. One entrepreneur, she's 12. She's in a, she does event planning and fundraising. So her things that she's going to be asking for or seeking are going to be different than my 16 year old who is a junior chef who is currently in culinary arts. He's asking for things that are based off of, you know, restaurant or working in a, in the commercial restaurant environment. So it varies on that young entrepreneur and what path they choose. Very impressive. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Is that Mr. Oh. I'm sorry, go ahead. Hi, Crystal. Thanks so much for that. And it's really exciting. I love hearing about working with young people always. It's always exciting. Um, I'm curious, working with young people also has its challenges, so I'm curious to hear a little bit about how you respond to that element of just, you know, that age demographic can be a little bit challenging, you know, one day they want to do this, the next they want to do something else, <laughs> how you respond to that, and then the second question I had is, as you work with the schools, every school is different, obviously, um, are you, like, when you look ahead, are you able to see sort of a kind of through line for how you can sort of systematize how you work with each school, recognizing that they're each different, like, 
are you able to find some sort of standards of how you do that kind of work? So it was kind of a two-part question. Okay, no problem. Now, I'll try my best. So for the first part with basically how kids um, are uh, shaky and uh, they're fickle and they can change their mind, you would find that it is not too much further than that with adults as well. So what, um, what I have found though, is that when it is something that they are passionate about and we have created, um, if we get to that stage where we have created um, a storyline, so to speak, there's been investment with pictures. They've started doing things with social media where their peers are also holding them account accountable or looking for the product or looking for the service, so to speak. All we can do just is even with adult entrepreneurs is be there as a support, continue to remind them of their goals and make sure that they are meeting them. But again, they are technically their goals. And then in reference to your second question about the different types of schools, um, really, I, I guess the, the, the main thing would be, it would really depend on them identifying what um, how they would first allow me to interact within that space and then talking with those students to see what it is that they need because it's really not about the schools it's really about the the young entrepreneurs and what goals that they identify that they are trying to accomplish and then us being able to expose to them different methods or let them see different um, outcomes of those different professions so really the young entrepreneurs are intended to guide the the hard of the program and we respond to what they need. I hope that answered the question. That does. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Crystal. Great pitch. Thank you. All right. Our next contestant is Charnel Thompson with Super Good Supermarket. Ms. Charnel, you will have three minutes to deliver your pitch and then five minutes to answer questions from the judges. So go ahead and get started whenever you're ready. Growing up, convenient meal choices didn't include healthy options. And accompanying my mother to the grocery store often resulted in me knowing more about what I couldn't have and what I should know not to ask for. Now with my grandmother, it was a different story. I may make it to the cash register with some powdered donuts or fruitopia. During this time in my life, more convenient, affordable dishes cost me a lot of time to realize the health hardships that I had were created by consistently eating foods that were absent of the vitamins that I needed resulting in a deficiency. I am Charnell Thompson, founder of Super Good Supermarket, a startup independent full service grocery store that meets the needs and budgets of, that meets the needs and budgets of our budget conscious shoppers and our high end lovers. Living in a food desert often leads to high consumption of processed fast foods resulting in compounded health issues over time, overall reduced quality of life or possibly an entire household which sadly results in generational health issues. At Super Good Supermarket, we convert areas that were once food deserts to food oases. Shoppers love a good deal, good service, and good options. Super Good Supermarket will offer top tier customer service, weekly deals, a variety of quality goods, community engagement, and our unique convenience based you buy, we grill, meals made to order food option. This option gives our patrons the opportunity to choose from a select menu of meals made to order. SNAP recipients also get to participate by utilizing their SNAP funds for the raw goods plus a nominal prep fee charge separately. Research notes that over 500,000 Houston residents live in a USDA confirmed designated food desert area. Competitors in the grocery store space include HEB, Fiesta, and Kroger, yet more than 60% of these grocery store chains within the greater Houston area are without a fresh meals made to order option that includes SNAP recipients, otherwise known as food stamps. At Super Good Supermarket, we will pride ourselves on having fresh food departments such as meat, seafood, produce, bakery, and deli, along with customary total grocery and personal care departments. We aim to accommodate shoppers across generations by offering traditional in-store shopping, online shopping, home delivery service, and pre-order grocery store pickup. With a team of advisors that has over a decade of combined experience in grocery store operations and business, we have a proven business model that allows us to service any socioeconomic family type without taking the profit loss of servicing lower median income shoppers. We will be able to be competitive by offering pricing, uh, by offering competitive pricing as being a member of retailer owned co-ops and utilizing local wholesalers. With previous experience launching a logistics company and investing in a retail store, I have seen proven success when you acquire a business in the supply chain as a method of scale. 
Growth opportunities include selling store branded goods, brokering our own shipment, and expanding um, through additional locations by means of acquisition. This investment will be used for the 3D build out design of our store, website build, and a part time equity fundraising expert to open by our target date of November 2023. Thank you. Thank you, Charnel. We will now open it up to questions from the judges. So, judges, if you have any questions, just come off mute and go ahead and ask. Hi, Charnel. Um, Katrina, did you want to go? I <laughs> know. You know what? I didn't raise my hand, but let's <laughs> let you start and I'll go next. Okay, absolutely. Um, Charnel, thank you. That was that was fantastic. <clears throat> you definitely hit on something near and dear to my heart when it comes to um, healthy eating and food um, and, and the connection to health. Um, question for you. You talked about expansion and this idea of acquisition. Um, where are you, I guess, today in terms of a physical location and having that secured and operating? It sounds like you are. And then how are you thinking about when you talk about acquisition, have you already been able to consider where, what those other food deserts are and like how you think about that? We'd just love to hear a little bit more about the expansion plan. Of course. So right now we're in the exception phase. So I have located two possible locations. However, there's gonna be a nine month plan to identify investors, recruit um, equity fundraising dollars, hire a store manager, and then uh, begin the recruitment phase of uh, hiring 30 to 50 employees because we're looking at possibly having a space between 15,000 and 22,000 uh, square feet. Um, and then what was the second question uh, that you asked? Uh, uh, I mean, oh, acquisition. Strong expansion and acquisition, how you're thinking. About right. So right now it's a perfect time. Um, a lot of Walgreens is closing. A lot of food towns are closing. Not food towns. Um, uh, Dollar Generals. And those uh, space sizes have hold the space that we're looking to acquire. And the SBA has a 7A program that allows you to only have 10% of the purchase price of an existing company. So we're in a great opportunity right now with the market, the way that it's looking, and also with people having this newfound interest and appreciation for grocery stores as an um, essential business due to the uh, COVID um, epidemic, pandemic. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Chanel. Great. Yes, thank you. I'm gonna pull my hand down. And with regard to um, kind of a SWAT yeah. thought process, if you could think <laughs> of, the markets that you want to enter, and then who's currently there. Can you kind of talk to me about some strengths and weaknesses and opportunities that your brand will have to win the clients in those markets? Of course. So strengths include um, recruiting investors that will be of the community. Oftentimes we hear about a new business that comes up and a lot of us, at least my peers are like, oh, I wish I would have been able to invest in that. So not only will we be providing healthy food options, but also the increase in everybody's socioeconomic makeup. And when you have more people on, on board that's a part of your team, they are tend to be more invested in the success of the overall um, um, vision of the business. Um, weaknesses would be that it will be a new store in the grocery store space. Um, however, I don't find that new is oftentimes less than or not having the um, quality that other stores have. So that's what I would say our strengths are. Strategy, really galvanizing the community and allowing elders to be partners within the store's uh, vision. Thank you. I don't see where to raise my hand. <laughs> I've been looking. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I really, really like uh, that you're not a food desert, you're a food oasis. I, I think that's very, very uh, unique and creative. And being a, a council member, I constantly hear that we have food deserts. And so uh, for you to offer this service is fantastic. Now, I, I'm assuming you're a brick and mortar building. You're not a delivery establishment. You have an actual physical building Right, we're at inception now, so we will be acquiring a physical location. So this okay. will be a complete startup um, on taking, uh, if that answers your question. But yes, it will be okay. a brick and mortar location, and we will offer 
um, in-store um, pickup, traditional shopping, delivery, online shopping, the, the whole gamut. Okay, and so how do you think you could fare competitively with the HEBs and the uh, Kroger's and all of those big food store chains? Of course, so we will still be able to offer competitive pricing um, as far as being able to comp um, compete with pricing and then also location, we will be in a food desert. So there wouldn't be any other competing stores within the, uh, the specific range of where the store is. And then also we're gonna invest in our employees because what you know is when you go somewhere and you feel welcome, you tend to wanna to come back. So the, the environment, the experience and the quality of products we have is how we'll be able to compete in this um, grocery store space. Great answer, thank you. Awesome, thank you so much, Chanel, and a wonderful pitch. So our last contestant for us today is Miss Tiara Tramble from Your Emotional Budget Planner. Tiara, you will have three minutes to deliver your pitch and then five minutes to answer questions from the judge. So whenever you're ready. Mental health is one thing that no one is exempt from. There are many reasons that mental health issues occur, but by combating mental health barriers through the use of emotional intelligence as a supporting strategy, we can begin to balance our emotional banks. Today is currently a mental, emotional, and behavioral crisis for children in our country. One in six youth are diagnosed with a mental health condition, but only half receive any mental health services. Untreated or inadequately treated mental illnesses can significantly interfere with the students functioning at home, school, and the community. Hi, my name is Tiara Tramble, the founder and visionary of Your Emotional Budget Planner. I am a licensed professional counselor associate specializing in high acuity care for youth and disabilities counseling. Your Emotional Budget Planner is an eight-week research-based approach where we provide an emotion literacy course to adolescents and youth in the fourth through 12th grade classroom setting. Through our customized prevention and intervention course, regulation skills and strategies are used in order to build and sustain emotional checks and balances. Children will benefit from this course by supporting positive youth behavioral health by decreasing the need for higher levels of care. Through the child's ability to understand and regulate their emotions, we implement aids to build their investment portfolios. An emotionally wealthy child makes investments through deposits. This can be obtained through the program's weekly themes. Some examples include understanding the emotions they are experiencing through self-awareness, positive self-talk through reframing and goal setting, and reflective practices by way of mindfulness. By utilizing this program, it provides a natural setting for mental health services and targets problems without a mental health diagnosis by reducing the stigma related to behavioral health care. The cost per, co the cost per cohort is $1,600 that's divided by the grade levels and $19 for the individual purchases of the student's interactive planner. Requested student response sponsorship and assistance are also available. Each student shall have the opportunity to receive interactive workbooks comprised of journal prompts, affirmations, and daily emotion balance trackers. In the next 90 days, I plan to trademark and establish your emotional budget planner as an LLC, hire a marketing expert for web design, social media management, along with the purchase of swag merchandise. Within a year, I foresee expanding the EBP team with an addition of an admin assistant and an additional program facilitator. With your EBP, I believe that we can begin to equip children with the tools that enables them to manage budget and save for big emotional expenses without having to file for bankruptcy. Thank you, Tiara. I will now open it up to judges' questions. Um, yep. Go ahead. And the rabbit has raised her hand. Tiara, thank you so much. I, I love the fact that you're very systematic and, and deliberate in explaining the business to me, and I have really good understanding of it. There was one question that I, I wanted to ask. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it's going to be in-person, one-on-one. 
have you considered expanding your delivery uh, to gamify or do anything else to connect with your students? Yes, absolutely. So um, the ultimate goal is to be able to provide like a, a group service. So this could be, like I said, through um, grade level. So it could be like the third grade would receive this service through um, uh, through the themes of the week. So the third grade, the fourth grade, fifth grade, and so on beyond, this group will be able to receive the services as, as a total, as a whole. If, their, um, if a student needs individual, then that's where we also will provide like a Saturday service where if a parent doesn't feel comfortable for the student to be able to participate in school, they'll be able to participate on the weekends or if the program is not in that certain school district. Got it, thank you. Hi Tiara, quick question um, and I apologize if I missed this. How do, is this an opt-in program for the students or is it referred through the teachers or how do you actually determine which students participate? Um, so yes, I think that um, for, by providing like an opt-in service, uh, the schools will be able to send out um, notifications to the home. And if the parents would like for their student to participate in this program, then that program will be awarded to the student. And if they opt out, then we can't force, um, force. you know. And so um, for the students to be able to have that option, um, but emotion literacy, um, it's one of those things like financial literacy that we wish that we would have known maybe earlier in life and maybe we could have um, avoided some of the um, nuances that we experience. 100%, 100%, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Councilwoman, would we like? Would you like a few moments? And we'll open it up to another question from the other judges. Uh, no, someone could move on and ask a question. Thank you. Katrina or Preetha, any other questions? Yes, I have one final question. Um, do you have a sort of proof of concept? Have you an example to share sort of the metrics of how the program has worked for one of your cohorts? Um, so in, I'm still in the building phases. So um, I wouldn't say that I have um, numbers to share, but I do have like an example of um, maybe a, a theme of the week that we would go over. So as far as it concerns, like if we're talking about um, positive self-talk through reframing and goal setting, um, sometimes students feel overwhelmed. And in those feelings of overwhelmed, we do negative self-talk. Like I'm stupid, I can't complete this. And through reframing or restructuring the thought process is maybe I'm unable to complete this task. I might be I might be unable to complete this task at that at this moment, but however, I am great in these other areas. Maybe I just need some additional support. So um, working on the reframing and also doing an activity surrounding reframing would be one of the activities that we implement in the theme of that week. Great, sounds great, thank you. You're welcome. All right, I think we have time for one more question. Okay, all right. Well, thank you so much, Tiara. Wonderful pitch. All right, as a reminder to our judges, please check your chat. You should have a link to join a separate room for deliberations.
All right. Well, awesome pitches, everyone. That was really wonderful. Our judges certainly have a tough job in front of them. So while they move on to the deliberation portion of the competition, we have here with us three former pitch competition winners who have volunteered their time to have a discussion with us today about their journey, insight, and sort of what the entrepreneurship space looks like for women right now. Um, so this will be a conversation style roundtable. So judges, please feel free to kind of build off each other and ask questions as we go. Um, so we'll start with some quick introductions. So first we have Malika James. Malika is the founder and CEO of Nurturing Seeds Doula LLC, providing full circle doula services for women and families through the pregnancy, labor, and postpartum periods. As a doula and mother, Malika supports and advocates for equity and medical care in order to combat the disproportional disparities in infant and maternal health. Welcome, Malika, and thank you for being here today. Thank you. Yeah. Next up, we have Cecily Fully Love. Please meet Miss Cecily Fully Love, a childbirth educator, sonographer, doula, and founder of Fully Love Pregnancy Center. Miss Fully Love became a business owner in the maternal industry because of her strong passion for maternal health and wanting to make a difference for mothers of color. She prides herself and her business in delivering the highest quality maternal care and shifting the paradigm in the maternal industry. Thank you so much, Cecily, for being here and welcome. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, we have Coach Laurel Woods. Laurel Woods is passionate about using fitness as a tool to navigate transitions in life. She is a certified personal trainer and motivation coach with four years of experience. Fitness therapy training was born when Laurel noticed a gap between life desires and taking action. The benefits of weight training and motivation coaching combined is the perfect recipe to navigate through life confidently. Thank you so much, Laurel, and welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have some questions here prepared for our panelists. Um, however, feel free to ask each other questions, build off one another, um, and let's have some fun. So um, all three of you have completed the WE360 program. So I'm just curious and kind of talk to us about what has been your entrepreneurship journey and how did this program support you in that? Um, I guess I'll go ahead and kick this off. Um, I always laugh when I tell someone that I joined this uh, program because when it came to me, I was sitting on my couch lounging, <laughs> lost in the business world and what I wanted to do with my business. Um, and so I guess I'll, I'll take it back to when I got started. I got started in 2020. Um, of course, when COVID happened, um, I was working at Lifetime. And um, I just remember getting that call saying, don't come back in. And so I thought I was going to come back in um, within a month. And then they, get, they kept telling us, you know, you're not coming back in until we just don't know. And so it hit me. I'm like, you know, I could do personal training on my own because that's what I was doing currently in the gym. Anyways, we were talking with the, the gym members. And so um, I started Body by Low at the time. It wasn't fitness therapy. It was Body by Low and I was doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, and then it wasn't until my girlfriend, Felicia, who also participated in this program with me, um, sent me an email saying, apply to this. And I'm like, you know what? What an opportunity. I need some extra help to one, get clear on what it is that I'm trying to do. And then also just an opportunity to learn and grow. Um, and so this program, has supported me in many ways. I rant and rave about this program all the time um, because it helped me get clear. And that's when I became fitness therapy training. Um, and I realized what set me apart from other fitness trainers. And if it wasn't for this program, I mean, I don't know where I'd be. So um, this program is has been amazing. And I'm sure these ladies can say the same. Yes, I definitely could say the same. Um, just to have a community full of women and like-minded women, um, that was actually my goal um, last year is to kind of join with like-minded women who were kind of business-minded, business-oriented, and had goals and wanted to create. And so uh, Felicia, she was a part of this program, and Nikki, I was just volunteering my time at a community baby shower um, for YWCA, and they came across, they was like, you're an entrepreneur? I'm like, yeah. They was like, well, you definitely 
definitely need to get a part of this program. Um, and so I got a part of the program and it was just, it was just amazing. Even with L'Oreal, you know, she's always there with her music jamming, helping us with the sessions and teaching us how to market and do things different, creating strategy. So it was exactly what I needed, um, what I needed and kind of definitely structured me into a better um, businesswoman. And I kind of came into uh, business kind of similar to you as well, the pandemic hit. And so my job, actually, they promoted me because they needed, I'm in healthcare, sonographer um, is my trade. So they actually promoted me, gave me a big raise. Um, and then like, I guess once like things started to um, like calm down, they tried to demote me. And so I was very, very frustrated. I was frustrated. I'm like, no, this can't be happening. And so I just felt like I didn't have any choice. I had already created my LLC. Um, I already had this strong passion for maternal health. And it was, you know, women dying of color in the birth world. And I'm like, okay, it's time for me to step up to the plate. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but it's either sink or swim. And God, please let me swim. <laughs> so um, yeah, I just stepped out on there on faith and things just start to come along with me on my journey, which I'm so grateful for the program and for the people who have who has came in my life, um, great mentors um, during this time. And yeah, it's it's just been, it's been, it's been a journey. <laughs> it's still a journey. Yeah. So I want to copy and paste everything that both of you all said about um, just the opportunity to work with like-minded women. And it's interesting because I'm in Ohio and I was able to connect with um, Laurel um, in uh, the pitch competition that we actually did last year and we connected, exchanged contact and kept up with each other. And so that was really good, just that um, across, um, across, across the states and just um, connecting on that front. But I too started my um, doula business. Oh, well, I started it last year, but really got trained uh, during the pandemic. I was working um, in leadership in maternal health, and I'm like, I, I got to do something. I need to be on the ground working with these women um, because I had to do it myself, and I knew the value that it brought to me, and I wanted to do the same and, and be that voice and be that support for women and families as well. Um, and so, yeah, the program was awesome. Going through the different modules um, was very eye-opening for me. Um, but also the opportunity to have a coach and someone to really check in on you uh, all the time. Uh, ours was Taylor Curtis. She is amazing. And she uh, would just meet with me Fridays and say, okay, Malika, what are we doing now? How are we, you know, how are we working out things? And was even there to assist with my pitch. And um, it was just uh, a really great opportunity to be part of this program for sure. Great. Well, thank you each uh, for sharing a little bit about your journey, kind of shifting a little bit to moments of success and growth. Um, do you remember a specific experience where you wish that you or your business had done something differently? Um, and if you were to go back, what would you do now? I guess I can start with that one. Um, so business is all about making mistakes. Life is about making mistakes and learn from them, learning from them. Um, so I'm grateful for every mistake that I've made in business and the mistakes that I'm going to make um, upcoming in business. But like looking back at things, I definitely wish I would have found this program right when I created that LLC, right when, you know, I had the business idea because it would have saved some stress for me. Um, moments of tears. <laughs> uh, yeah, it would have saved all of that just to have that structure um, that the program kind of provided and breaking down um, like the why you're doing this and like the pitch and everything. I definitely wish I would have had like a program and a group of women before I even started branching out thinking um, of creating my business. So um, I think that these ladies are in within the idea phases um, are in a great start uh, to, you know, have this structure and have this program to kind of navigate a little bit better because you make a lot of mistakes when you don't know what you're doing. So having a guide and a mentor to kind of help you through the process um, is super beneficial. And I wish I would have had that kind of coming into uh, business. 
I'd have to say uh, the same, actually. I wish I had this um, in the very beginning because of how structured it is, right? Like you like you mentioned, all the things that um, the resources and the things that we receive from this program. Um, I definitely wish I had this early on. Um, and because this program helped me get clear on my lane, I like to call it, and what sets me apart from other um, fitness trainers, uh, if I had that in the beginning, it would have saved me. Uh, I, I feel like I would have gained traction quicker um, instead of kind of bumping my head. It, this program saves you from bumping your head. Like she's, you're going to make mistakes, but because it's structured and because it's so supportive, um, it, it just kind of saves a, a lot of the nuances that we do go through um, when we're starting a business. Um, and so this program, um, it's so perfect for the startup phase. It's, it's so perfect. I love the order of everything. Um, and I just can't stress enough about how clear you can get on your uniqueness of the business, right? That's what sets you apart from all your competitors. Um, and if, if we can get that clear in the beginning, of our journey, um, we can we can save ourselves a little bit of headache, heartache, and tears, and sweat, and no blood. But yeah, <laughs> I agree. I think for me, um, luckily, I was like really in the beginning phase when I started um, We Three Sixty. I had the idea concept, and I you know I went ahead and just got my LLC. I'm like I'm going ahead and do it, um, but really took some time to build. Um, and I wish I would have took even more time to just carve out everything that I was thinking in my head because I'm coming up with new things all the time. And I'm like, okay, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. Um, but just really spending additional time with all the things that I'm trying to do, um, just the plan, that planning phase is key. And I know folks are, you know, super excited just to start and go and, oh, I can save the world and do all of this. But you really need to have that clear cut plan plan and where are you going to be going in the next two to five, two to three, two to whatever years um, and planning ahead and building in some time for um, some things to go not the way that you want to go. So just to share last year um, was when I started my business. Last year was also uh, with my mother. She passed away and then um, found out I was pregnant all in the same year. And so we're like, okay, maybe I need to take a moment and, and uh, just give myself some self-care and uh, reevaluate and come back. And so building time for those moments where you have some downtime and you might need to regroup and being okay with that. And I totally agree. I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying, Malika, just because um, I think like when you become in business, a lot of us try to rush the process. And so taking that time to kind of, and like you said, building in that time, because you, when life starts happening to you, you know, you it's like everything's kind of going out of control. You're trying to hold on and build this business. And then you kind of go insane a little bit or, you know, you don't feel yourself and you don't feel like sometimes you can show up. Um, and so I totally agree with you, like building in that time and having grace with yourself during these periods, because we're still human, we're still human, and we're still going to go through life experiences, and you can't predict what's going to happen. And mm -hmm. I, I definitely had um, a similar situation that year, and I just didn't expect any of any of what was coming. And so that definitely, I felt like set me back, but it allowed me to reconnect with myself and get myself together so I can come out as a stronger um, business woman. So I definitely awesome. agree with what you're saying there. I'd like to jump in and say, I agree as well. And I love that you said um, being okay with it, being okay with stepping back, taking a pause, reevaluating, seeing seeing uh, what you can do moving forward, just due to the situations that come about, you know, randomly. Um, I, I was in business for a year before I switched my name, business model, all of my uniqueness, all of that stuff. I was in business for a year. And sometimes that could be a little nerve wracking because you're saying, okay, I've spent all this time building this um, and something, you know, rocks were thrown at me, whatever that may be. And then you're like, where do I go from here? And you can just be frustrated because you can feel 
like you failed a little bit. There's so many emotions and thoughts that come up in entrepreneurship, but being able to have that control and being able to breathe and say, it's okay to pause. It's okay to change. Um, I'm someone who loves change. My business is pretty much based around um, navigating the transitions in life through fitness and motivation um, coaching. And so I'm all about the changes. And, and really what I stress to my clients is be okay with the changes, be okay to just pause, like literally be okay, you know? Um, and I, I, I just think that's so important in entrepreneurship. Things happen. <laughs> right. Wonderful. Well, thank you all for sharing. Kind of on the flip side, uh, by way of comparison, do you remember something that you've done that was really successful or something that you wish you could just tell everyone that they should do this in order to be more successful? Um, I would say definitely connecting with other women and just opening your mouth about your business. Like, I wish I could tell everyone about that. Like, you don't know how many pregnant women I see a day. And like before I used to be very timid and scared to say anything, but I'm like, okay, the moment, the more that I'm quiet and I don't speak up of this great business that I've built and this, all the services that I have to offer, that's a one less person who is able to benefit from my business. So not being scared to speak mm -hmm. up about your business um, and talking about your business, family, friends, um, people in the grocery store, every, every, everyone, everyone. Um, so that's definitely something this year that I have integrated. Um, it's just talking and telling people about my business. I see a pregnant mom or just a woman in general, um, because a lot of women are going to become pregnant in their mm -hmm. lifetime. So just kind of telling them what we have to offer. Um, and maybe they can share it with a friend or share it with a, you know, a family member, but, um, that's definitely something that I'm, I'm very happy about. It's just, talking about my business and sharing and networking uh, with other people. Yes, I feel like we're going to be the, I agree, I agree <laughs> the whole time, but seriously, it's so hard to talk about yourself, right? Like, I'm like, this is just what I do, but opening your mouth to say what it is that you do and folks are like, yes, I need you. Um, I was at actually um, an event um, somewhere just randomly and I saw one of my friends um, from uh, from high school, and I thought she was pregnant. I said, "Hey, girl, how you doing?" So you have a doula? She's like, "No, I've been meaning to get one." I'm like, "I'm a doula." She's like, "Are you serious?" And so instantly, she already knew me, and so right then and there, we were connected. And that's what you have to do: just continue to talk to folks. And everyone knows me in my community as okay. She does something with the babies and moms. Like, I need to get with her. And so um, just putting yourself out there and being OK with that and just letting it fall through because you spent time building this business. You know what it is that you're doing and uh, you want folks to um, receive the great things that you have to offer. So you have to open up your mouth to say what it is that you can provide them. So I agree with that. And of course, I'm going to agree. <laughs> that's, that's all this is. I mean, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm just going to go ahead and piggyback uh, off of that. Um, speaking about your business, one thing I like to stress or wish everyone knew is, you know, when you have the business idea uh, or, or goal in mind um, of starting a business, um, there's usually some passion behind that somewhere, right? Um, you, you're solving a problem or there's something that you're really good at or you, you found a need in a, in a market or community. Um, and behind that is some passion. And so with that passion, uh, getting clear on what makes you unique is something that I've learned a lot last year with within this program, um, your unique value proposition, what okay. truly sets you apart. And, and you know that it's really about getting clear on it and how to how to voice that. But it's it's a part of you sharing your business with others. And so when you share, um, sometimes it's a lot of nerves and you're like, you know, um, am I sometimes we don't feel qualified, we might have that imposter mm. syndrome with our business. Mm -hmm. It's like, I know I'm needed, but am I qualified? But you are qualified. 
right? There's something about you. There's something about your business that sets you apart from everyone. I mean, we're all set apart from each other in some way, and we're all unique in some way. And so I'm pretty sure that business idea that you have, you know, is unique in some way. So I I wish everyone um, could really hone in and become confident and really um, mm -hmm. embrace their passion for their business. I, I think the the passion behind it is what really draws us to our consumers. It draws us to, you know, uh, other entrepreneurs. And there's a connection that can be made because, I mean, let's be honest, our consumers, you know, they either relate to our product or service or in some kind of way, there's always that emotional attachment behind it. So if you're able to um, evoke those emotions through your passion of your business and what makes you unique, um, I think that is that sets the tone for me as an entrepreneur. So. And I would just like to add, definitely, um, you know, having a unique proposition to your business, but what makes your business unique is you. There's mm -hmm. literally no one in this world that is you. So there's no one that has your personality, your little quirks or thinks how you does, literally no one. So that is what's cool about, you know, being a business owner because you get to, you know, be kind of the driver of this and, um, you know, you're what what you have to offer. So um, definitely, and I, I, I also like, um, sometimes was timid um, when I met other people doing what I was doing, you know, and I didn't want to kind of speak because I'm like, okay, I've only been doing this for a year, like, or I'm new to this. Okay, maybe I shouldn't say anything, but it's just like, those people could never be me and I would never want to be them. So that's what makes me different in my business. And that's what makes mm -hmm. them different in their business. So, you know, definitely, I would like to just, you know, just add on to that. It's just like, that's what makes your business unique is you is you so being yes. standing on that and you know definitely being prideful in that that no one is like you and no one will ever be like you <laughs> yeah so I also wanted to add something quickly just about one thing that I wish everyone was doing and I know it's a business so sometimes you know the, yes there's competition but I feel like in the doula world I don't feel like there's competition to me it's like there's, there are moms here to serve people, like you mentioned, people are going to be pregnant. How do we serve these families? And so there are other doulas in my community and we get together to talk about like, yes. okay, what's working for you? Um, we, um, there's a, a location where people, uh, a lot of moms go to just to receive information and the doulas are there. And so we big up each other. Um, just to say, hey, do you know about X, Y, and Z? Because I can't serve everybody. Um, and so how do I make sure that we are building this network of doulas within our community? Um, one of the things on a personal note is there was someone who was training to be a doula and she needed another birth. And I said, hey, come on. I can be the one that you uh, you can have as one of your, uh, your births. And so she was phenomenal. And she also went through the WE360 program as well. And so we meet on a regular basis and we talk a lot about, um, again, what are some best practices? And she was there for my own birth. So I can talk about her when I'm in the community to say, that is my doula. She's the bomb. She is awesome. And I want y'all to utilize her if, like I said, I'm not going to be able to serve everyone. So there are other people that can um, do similar services as well. Yes. I definitely agree. And that's the last thing. It just not always thinking about competition, but how you can partner as well. Because like she said, you cannot serve everyone. And so in the maternal industry, we're definitely suffering a crisis. So any doula that I run across or, you know, anyone in my industry, I'm definitely, my first thing is not even competition. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of, okay, how can we get together and build a community to help these people? Because there's a lot of them and, you know, there's only one me and only one you. So how can we, you know, get together and make this stronger and bigger? So I, I definitely piggyback with that. Yeah, it sounds like, yeah, the entrepreneurship space is so much of selling yourself too, right? That's kind of the theme that I'm hearing. How do y'all navigate that? How do you work through like trying to sell yourself while also not like stepping on the toes of other entrepreneurs in a similar space and still focusing on collaboration. Yeah, I would say it's just showing up as your authentic self. 
um that's that's just what I that's what I do hopefully it's working correct for me but just showing up as your authentic self and when you do that it's like no harm or ill intention behind that so you know I'm I, I try to move with intention um and and love and everything behind what I do uh so just showing up as your authentic self and that's how I sell myself is just being authentically me yes I I love that you said um just being intentional um, again, I can't stress enough about clarity on your business too. Um, it just, it's something about that, having that clarity on, on what it is that, first of all, clarity on who you are, right? And then clarity on what it is that you offer. Because when, when you go into partnerships, you know, collaborations or putting yourself out there, it brings about a certain confidence to where you don't have to be worried about stepping on toes. You don't have to be worried about um, comparison or anything like that. You are completely in the know. You are, um, everything is clear cut. You're able to go into um, rooms and spaces um, and, and be able to connect with other people. So um, I, that's kind of what has worked for me. Um, I know one thing that a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with is social media. And we've seen the rise of a lot of businesses uh, within the last two years. And, you know, one of the main streams of marketing is social media today, but it can seem oversaturated. There's so many fitness trainers, right? But because I am clear on what sets me apart um, from other trainers by really using fitness as a tool to navigate changes in life. There's that lane that people can connect to. So because I know that, I know who then to uh, collaborate with and who to bring on, you know, working with nutritionists, food is a big part, you know, of uh, health and, and, um, and fitness. And so just being clear cut on who you are, what it is that you do, being clear on everything. That, that I think there there won't be any toes stepped on. <laughs> All right. Well, um, so kind of pivoting again, recognizing that some of our audience members today and pitch con competition. Oh, pitch contestants will kind of be wrapping up their time in our program. Um, what steps did you take after completing the program and pitch competition that made you more successful that you'd really recommend to them as next steps? Um, one thing I focused on after everything was uh, my business model because I've learned so much. Um, and, you know, being a winner of the, the previous pitch competition, there's that, you know, sit down, reevaluate, what am I going to do with this? Where am I going with this? Just making sure you're clear again. Um, I, I would say as wrapping up this program um, and pitch competition is to just go back into your business and, and just make sure everything is where it needs to be and really hone in on those goals. Um, and, and if you are a winner today, you know, just make sure you are being very strategic with those funds because it's, it's, it is all about growing and it is all about reaching that target market. So um, I think that's a, those are the steps that I took to kind of like wrap up everything and to move forward. Yeah, I took some time again to like reevaluate where I was at that point. And again, all the things that were happening at that point in time, I literally had to just take a take a step back and um and bring in that self-care. And um yeah, I had to pause for a moment and it was a necessary pause. And then I came back full, full fledged after I had my baby <laughs> and we're like, okay, we're doing this. And so again, looking at that model. Um, business model, looking at your goals and make sure to see, okay, where did I uh, make some progress? Uh, where didn't I not so well hit some progress? And how can I make sure that the next year that I'm hitting some of these targets? So um, those are some of the things that I do. Um, for me, I would say that for just, yeah, definitely use this program as the base and continue to build. Um, continue to learn, continue to do your research, continue to figure out how you can get funding for your business. Um, yeah, continue to learn, continue to grow, uh, kind of refocus, uh, definitely networking. 
um, because you just never know. You just never know who can help you and what you're needing help with um, and what like really if you're if you're a winner, definitely seeing the money that you get um, and seeing where it needs to be. OK, if you need to put so and so many dollars into marketing to kind of get you more traction or if you need some more coaching or if you need more products, kind of breaking that down before it even gets to you. So it's spent wisely, um, if that makes sense. So uh, definitely using this as a base in uh, building and continue to learn and continue to grow. Um, yeah. I would also add one thing is also connect with some of the local uh, small small business development centers within your community. So there's one um, right here in Dayton, the Miami Valley area that I was able to connect with as well. So all the different support that you need is out there. So again, YWCA was awesome with having this program and just connecting with other like programs that can um, that are there to help you. And a lot of them are free. And so utilize the free resources that you do have um, available. Wonderful. Well, thank the three. Thank you again to all three of you. Um, so our judges do have a decision. I just want to give another moment. Um, if there's any final thoughts that you would, ladies would like to share, um, go ahead and then we can uh, close out. I just want to say congratulations to each and every one of you for making it this far into the pitch competition. I know I was in this space and I can just remember just shaking because <laughs> I'm like, okay, I have this dream. We all have these dreams and, you know, you want people to believe in your dreams and what you're doing. And, you know, no matter what the term turnout is, you know, you all ladies are winners um, and you're doing a great job and thank you for everything that you do. And we need you. Um, you know, it definitely takes different people for different things and in different industries. So we need each and every one of you. So keep going, never give up. Um, and yeah, just, just definitely encourage, you know, other women to do the same. Uh, and that's what I, that's the, all I, I would like to say. <laughs> that was perfect. Everything Cecily said, <laughs> everything. Congratulations to you ladies. Um, and just remember how bold you are. This is really big. You know, just talking about your business is one thing, but it really is something major because it it takes about a, a certain presence of you to be able to stand up in front of a crowd, even though we're on Zoom, you stood up today. Um, and so take that with you and just remember how bold you are and use that as fuel as you continue to grow and learn um, and move your business forward. And like she said, you are needed. And so just remember your why and what makes you unique and that there's no one else like you. and I mean, success will be on its way. So congratulations to you all. You all did amazing today. And in the spirit of affirmations, I love how you all just affirm them. Um, just get your team together, like your outside team to, to pour back into you, uh, your friends, your parents or whomever it is just to give you that, to be that cheerleader for you in those times where you feel like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? No, you can do this. Your services are needed. You have this. You are worthy. Um, and just have that um, and, and just believe and know that you are here for a reason. And I've gone preach to self-care talk. Take time for you. Um, when you need to take a moment, take that moment because you are no good to anyone else if you um, aren't good to yourself. So self-care is, is the big portion. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you again for this. This has been great. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Miss Terry Davis, who is going to let us know um, the results. Miss Terry. Okay, just a moment. Let me see if I can get myself back. Okay, for some reason, I can't be seen at this. At, can everyone hear me? Yes. I can hear you. Okay. 
I don't know why. Let me try one, one other thing right quick. Now we can see you too. Okay, now you can see me? Yes. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, there I am, y'all can see. Okay, great. Um, first of all, I want to say congratulations to every contestant that we had today. You are all winners. You are all phenomenal women. And I can't see you doing nothing but the very best. I want to, again, congratulate each and every one of you because you are all winners. Now, with that being said, here we go. The third place, the $5,000 funding goes to Alexis Evans, the Wellness John. Second place, the $10,000 award goes to Chanel Thompson, Super Good Supermarket LLC. And last, uh, first, first place, $15,000 goes to Roxanne Deems, Serene Counseling and Wellness. Let's give all of our winners a round of applause. Congratulations to all of you. Congratulations. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. And always remember, W. Uh, WV360 will be here. We are we, uh, doing bigger things that we're going to try to expand and we'll, we, we will still be here to help you guys with any, anything that you need in growing your business. Again, congratulations. Wonderful. Well, congratulations to all of our finalists today and a big congratulations to Roxanne, Alexis, and Charnel. Y'all did it. This has been great. Um, thank you to our judges for giving us your time today. And thank you to our panelists for all your insight and that really incredible conversation. Thank you to the McCreary Group Foundation for making this program possible. And last but certainly not least, thank you to the YWCA USA for your support in growing this program and supporting women of color pursuing entrepreneurship. Everyone did so great. I'm so happy to be here. Congratulations again. Um, to all of our entrepreneurs in the audience, we wish you the absolute best in your business. Um, please keep in touch with us here at Houston. We will talk to you soon. Yes. One, one moment before we before we go, yes. um, I do want to say that our generous funders over at the McCoy Group Foundation um, have offered all of our participants who did not win a prize a day um, the chance to do some one on one coaching with them because um, they made it this far in the pitch competition. Um, and so they're going to be doing some additional coaching um, to help out our additional um, pitch participants today. So if you are interested in that, please reach out to Ashley, Laurel, and myself, and we will make sure to get you connected over with um, coaching for, from the McCoury Group Foundation. Thank you so much, all.